Dylan Jovene from Behind the Market joins me today to discuss developments in the rapid moving biotech sector. Let's get started. I have Dylan Jovene from Behind the Markets here with me today. Great to have you back on the channel, Dylan. Let's talk biotech today. Now, we discussed this a little bit back in December um, when we kind of talked about the pharmaceutical industry, the whole weight loss uh, revolution that's been going on. But it's been a few months now. And given the rapid developments in the biotech sector, I think it might be time to revisit some things here. Mm -hmm. So Dylan, why don't you kind of start us off here by telling us about some, maybe of some of the shifts that you've seen in the biotech sector since our last video. Um, are there any current trends that stick out to you? Well, thanks for having me here, Lacey. It's yes. always great to talk to you. Um, I think the biggest one is the weight loss uh, mega trend is actually taking hold right now. Uh, you know, it's actually starting to hit the consciousness. I mean, people are really, especially investors, are really starting to get with it. I mean, in the past 60 days, I mean, we've owned two stocks that have jumped up. I mean, Viking was up 121% this week. That's a stock mm -hmm. we own. It's up 300% from our recommended price. And Altimune was up 200%. And what's happening is whenever one of these small, so you have this, the big weight loss industry. And right now you have Eli Lilly and you have Novo Nordisk. Mm -hmm. And they're really, you know, on the verge of carving up a $100 billion plus market. So you have all these small little biotechs that are creating all these new weight loss drugs. And the argument is, or our, our thesis has been, that the big pharma giants like Glaxo, uh, Pfizer, and so on, Bristol-Myers, AstraZeneca, that don't have a current weight loss drug are going to end up acquiring a bunch of these small little companies like Viking or Altimune that have them because they don't have a dance partner. And it's turning out now that you know this these GLP-1 drugs are going to be more valuable than all cancer drugs combined. Mm -hmm. That's what the expectation is here. That's how crazy this is. That's how big the market is. And you know, the funny thing is, America is not even the heaviest country on earth. Unbelievably, I didn't know this. I learned this when I started researching this last year. China is. Mm. So there is a massive worldwide market for these drugs and they're just going to be huge. So whenever a small little tiny biotech announces great results, on these drugs, especially phase two, their mm -hmm. shares just double immediately because everybody knows that the other big pharma giants that don't have one of these yet are looking at them yep. very closely. Okay, so as we kind of get into this, will you quickly remind us what are your top criteria for evaluating these biotech stocks? Well, the, the first, the most important thing, and I learned this lesson the hardest way possible. I've got my butt kicked, you know, a dozen times when I was younger. But the most important thing I do is I always try to avoid phase one companies because phase one companies are basically two guys in a lab testing mice. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm being a little, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but, you know, they're basically so far away from meaningful data. So I like to stay in late phase two, early phase three companies that are in late phase two, early phase three. They've reported data. They've cleared phase one and they've reported data at least through mid phase two. So they're telling us that the drugs work. There's no adverse side effects. They're well tolerated, et cetera, et cetera. The second thing I like to do is I like to invest in companies that have a big anchor partner, ideally. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a scientist. Well, you know, we have an approach that we use here at Behind the Markets and Biotech et cetera called blunt force logic. Mm -hmm. We are just looking to reason our way through these. So uh, since I'm not a scientist, I can't go to XYZ company. I can't go to Viking Therapeutics, for example, and look at the molecule they're using for their GL, uh, GLP-1 drug and, and say to myself, well, this one's better than that one. So it's much better for me to have a big pharma partner go in there with their scientists and say, well, we like this. We'll invest a billion dollars in your company. And, you know, finally, management. I mean, the best case scenario is when you see a management team that has successfully brought a drug across the finish line before mm -hmm. and commercialized it. So, I mean, you know, we want to bet on the odds and, and, you know, finding following those three basic principles helps eliminate a lot of the junk. And mm -hmm. I'll just finish with this. In phase one, I call that the stock promoter phase, because stocks that are really in early phase one, when they're really moving up or down, it's basically hype because they're not delivering anything yet. It's mm -hmm. just hype. So, I, you know, I, I've been burned by that 30 years ago when I was younger starting this business. So, um, you know, I try to avoid things that can cause me terrible pain, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in some ways in my life. Okay, know, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> so kind of going off that though, so how do you analyze though those financial the financial health and maybe future prospects of these biotech companies that don't have current revenue? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, so, you know, I, I grew up as a value investor, you know, I'm one of those guys who read and studied everything Warren Buffett ever wrote, mm -hmm. you know, I've read all of, I mean, everything there is to read about uh, analyzing. And that's how I made my, my name and my reputation, basically by doing good old fashioned value analysis of, of different companies and business analysis. So, you know, it's, it's what you're trying to do ideally in this scenario is late phase two, phase three, good management team. You want biotechs that are actually focused on huge problems mm -hmm. where right now their their new drug let's say a new cancer drug can replace an existing drug that generates two three five billion dollars a year in revenue because a lot of these old i mean think about the word think about uh, chemotherapy chemo is a word uh, for chemical chemical mm -hmm. therapy so a lot of these drugs these chemotherapy drugs they're 50 years old 60 years old and they're the standard so what we're looking for is we're saying to ourselves if this small company has a molecule or a way to actually attack the cancer directly, it could reduce or eliminate the need for that two, three billion dollar a year chemical drug that just wrecks havoc on the immune system. So, you know, it's not an exact science, but that's kind of uh, that's been very successful mm -hmm. for us, that, that kind of reasoning. OK, so are there any emerging areas within biotech right now that maybe aren't being talked about as much or what are you looking at specifically? Yeah. So, you know, last year, our big theme was the weight loss sector. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, just nobody was talking about it this year. It's smart chemo. You know, again, uh, you know, if you think about chemotherapy, like, um, you know, bombs, dumb bombs, think about World War Two. You know, they just dropped 100 bombs just to take out one factory and half of them didn't even hit the factory. Most of them didn't. That's what chemotherapy is right now. You basically take chemotherapy and it attacks the cancer cells and it attacks the healthy cells. That's why it's so sickening for people. When I was growing up, they used to say, well, the chemo will get you before the cancer ever does. So what smart chemo, there's a new uh, chemotherapy out there now, a new, new class of chemotherapy called mm -hmm. smart chemo. And it's like a smart bomb. It goes right after the cancer. Basically, it's programmed to go right after the cancer and it leaves the healthy cells alone. Mm -hmm. This is a revolution in cancer uh, treatment. And we, one of our smart chemo stocks was taken off, uh, taken over last year, uh, Immunogen, uh, we, taken over by uh, AbV. But there's a bunch of them that still haven't been taken over. And one of them that we like, a bigger one that we like is uh, Daichi Sankyo. The symbol on that is VSKYF. That's a longer term hold, mm -hmm. but again, making very big moves in smart chemo. And when Wall Street catches up to uh, what these guys are doing and what other smaller companies are doing, this is the stocks are going to get rewarded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so risks now, uh, those are not the most fun thing to talk about. But as we know, it's a big part of investing. So we kind of have to talk about it. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that are facing the biotech industry today? And what can investors do to address them, Dylan? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, actually, you know, the, the, the biggest challenge facing the biotech industry today is there's not enough private funding, VC funding going into these companies. I mean, the opportunities in front of biotech are just massive. Uh, you know, when you think of AI and drug discovery, when you think of, uh, you know, smart chemotherapy, these weight loss drugs, I mean, there is just not enough planes. Uh, there, There's a lot of planes on the runway, but they don't have permission to take off yet. We have, a, you know, so so basically that's going to hit investors actually in the next two years, three years. Basically, that's limiting the supply of biotech opportunities on the market, which is making the demand for the ones that are on the market even greater so one thing that investors want to do is just be careful of phase one drugs the companies that just have phase one drugs unless it's a phase one drug and they already have later term drugs phase two phase three etc that mm -hmm. or approved drugs and the other thing is you got to make sure these companies can sell their drugs i mean remember something lacy <clears throat> biotechs are started by scientists doctor types mm -hmm. what do these guys know about going around and selling drugs you know what I mean? Like you think you have to create a manufacturing plant or arrange to have it manufactured. You have to have salespeople go out and sell it, go to doctor's offices, knock on doors, get deals done. So there's a very big difference between designing and making a drug that works and selling a mm -hmm. drug 
that works. Where we have found a lot of success in is these small little companies that make these great drugs, they don't even care about commercializing them. They're basically just selling them to a big, big pharma giant that wants to get into that space. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you kind of just touched on this here, but uh, the viewers want this. It's really important. So what is the last kind of little bit of a nugget of advice that you would give to investors that are new to investing in biotech? Uh, treat them, treat the small biotech stocks like stock options. You know what I mean? Be very, very careful with them. And, you know, you lower your risk by going to late phase two, phase three, mm -hmm. especially phase three. If you're in a phase three company with a big drug, a drug that has a big potential market, you know, lymphoma, leukemia, melanoma. I mean, I'm talking about a big, big drug market. Mm -hmm. Then you could see the thing really move. You know, we own Iovance. And uh, we recommended IOVANCE and, you know, it was at $7 three weeks ago and now it's at 16, 17 bucks because they got their TIL therapy approved. That's another area, by the way, that people aren't really talking about. But basically, if you just focus, if you're a beginner investor, just focus on phase three drugs solving big problems. And when they get approved, if they get approved, their stocks are going to double or triple in a month. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they become a prime takeover target or they commercialize the treatment themselves. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Dylan, thank you so much for sharing those biotech insights with us today. To our viewers, comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on this sector, or maybe some specific companies that have your attention. I will link Dylan's information down below so you can follow along with him. And as always, we have more market research for you right here at MarketBeat. Thanks for watching. And thank you again, Dylan.